Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, as you should know, if you've been a follower of this channel for a while, I play the Belgians in Bolt Action. Now, they're not one of the more popular sides in the game, as you can imagine, since they weren't in the war for very long, and they weren't in the war during the period when all the really crazy stuff came in towards the end, which is the stuff that excites a lot of people. But I actually think the fact that you have so many of these underdog nations in the early war makes it really interesting to play and to collect. But... What a lot of people find when they head over to the Warlord site to decide which side they're going to play, they probably look at the model range, and then they click on something like the Belgians or the Finns, and see that there just aren't a lot of models to choose from. Which can be a little bit misleading, because in the book, the France and the Allies book here, let's have a look at the Belgian section, shall we? So, we have... The HQ units. Now, none of these are actually available from Warlord. About 50% of the things on this page are not available from Warlord. You can't get cavalry. You can't get the Force Public, which is the Belgian Congo soldiers. You can't get machine gun teams. From the artillery, most of this you can't get. There's no sniper. Certainly no medium heavy artillery. No anti-aircraft guns, no mortars to speak of. The vehicles, most of these are unavailable. So within the book, there is a lot more that is not available on their website. And there are ways you can get around this. First of all, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Head swap. This is the power of the head swap here. These are both the same model in the Belgian range. Just one of them has the standard helmet and the other one has the chasseur beret and you can see just painting them in different colors and giving them different heads makes them look extremely different so with that in mind i set out to scour the warlord website to look for units that i could use as belgians with the use of some strategic head swapping the first ones i came across were these italian command now of all the different armies hq units i felt that these ones they were the closest in uniform resemblance to the belgians you might think maybe the French, but their coats tend to be a bit long. Whereas the Italians, theirs are pretty much the same length as the Belgian uniform. There are a few differences, obviously, like pockets in different places, and slightly different equipment, and different satchels, and so on. But, if you're willing to take a few liberties to expand your collection a little bit, and you're not too concerned with every single detail being 100% perfect, then there's an awful lot you can do. And these are a nice example. So previously, without these, you would just be using regular Belgian troops as you command, and there would be no way to distinguish them from the others. So you could argue that the army is unplayable in that state, with no headquarter models whatsoever. These can easily be your officers, or even medics, and then that guy can be an observer or a spotter with his radio. Another unit I really wanted that was lacking from the Belgian range was a sniper. Now this one was even easier because I didn't even have to buy an existing sniper model from a different army and then put a head on it. This is just a Belgian soldier and I've just attached a little scope onto the top of his gun, which you should be able to see there. Virtually all the different nations have at least a model who is posed somewhat like a sniper. So we're really fleshing out the Belgians already, and for this one we haven't even had to go elsewhere. Next we have the heavy artillery. Now there's no Belgian model for this. But I saw it in the Belgian section of the book, it says that they used quite a few German model heavy artillery pieces. So I went over to the German section on Warlord's website and found this one, and this one seemed to be from round about the same time period. And even though there are some equipment differences on the crew that would identify them as German if you look closely, just those head swaps and painting them in Belgian colours makes them look completely un-German, in my opinion. And I've since been told that this particular artillery piece wasn't used by the Belgians, but that's not of any great concern to me. However, the book is very useful at giving you details on the specific weapons that they used in the war on some of the entries. So when you've read that, you can Google that particular weapon, see exactly what it looks like, and then go through the other ranges until you found one that matches. Which is precisely what I did with these Finns. This is a Finnish medium mortar and a Finnish light mortar. I looked up the model of the mortars that the Belgians actually used and made sure that the one I was buying looked 
either very similar or exactly the same, and they pretty much did. And the Finnish uniforms, they're very, very similar to the Belgian ones, actually. Again, they're just lacking a few little accessories, but I don't think anyone's really going to notice that when they're in the right colours, and it's the heads that you see first and foremost. Those are the most distinctive part of virtually all the uniforms in World War II, as far as I can tell. As you can see, I haven't got around to painting these ones yet because I only just acquired these. Next, we have a heavy machine gun. Now, the word heavy doesn't appear very often in the Belgian army, so the heavy artillery and the heavy machine gun were musts for me, just to beef them up a little bit, give them a bit more hitting power. So this is an American heavy machine gun, and this is one of those occasions where it does give you a lot of information on the weapon that the Belgians actually used. I was able to Google the name of the weapon, look at the picture of it, and then compare it to make sure it was very similar to this one, and it is. I actually got some extra Belgian crewmen to use on this weapon, but when I came to actually put it together, first of all, I found that the uniforms the Americans use, they don't look too dissimilar, really. And also, the fact that some of the crew, for example this one, he's holding the ammo belt there, so I didn't want to go in and start hacking all that up and then try to reposition it on a Belgian model. So I decided, you know what, they look close enough, they're going to do as they are with Belgian heads, because again, the heads are the most important part. And speaking of heads, obviously they don't come as standard with the other nation's blister packs. So if you just email Warlord and let them know, hey, I'm building an army for this specific nation, but I want to use models from this other one, can you send me some heads for that? Then they can definitely sort you out. Another model I've got here that hasn't been assembled yet is a British anti-air gun which, after some googling, I found out is the exact model that the Belgians actually used in the war as well. Obviously the crew look a little bit different, but again, with the head swaps, they're going to look fine. With this particular model, there was one crewman who has his head attached, so I had to just hack that off. But for the most part, they have interchangeable heads. If you're going to do something like this, you want to go onto the Warlord website and look for the interchangeable head symbol, which lets you know that the models come with separate heads, so then you can order the heads that you want and flesh out your model range for your lesser nations. Another thing to consider is using other manufacturers, particularly for vehicles. There are an awful lot of companies that make tanks out there. And for the Belgians, when I was looking through the list, I saw the Force Publique, the soldiers from the Belgian Congo, and they can serve a very specific role in the army, because you can take them in up to squads of 20, which is much larger than all the other squads. They aren't experienced, but just the ability to take so many of them does make them unique. So I thought, well, I want to have some of them in the army, but Warlord don't produce them. So I started looking around, and I came across Foundry miniatures, and they produce a lot of African soldiers. These, I believe, are called Advancing Ascari, and I think they fall under the British section on the Foundry website. But I did a bit of googling on the Force Public, and found out that, yeah, they did dress pretty much like that. They had those hats and everything. I don't know whether or not they wore them in combat in World War II, or whether they would have used the, the fixed bayonets on the end of the guns in World War II, but I don't think that's too much of a concern. So really, there's very little in the Belgian army that I'd be unable to acquire. The only things, really, are some of the vehicles, because an awful lot of historical gaming isn't in 28mm scale, and a lot of scale models tend to be larger as well. So I've yet to find an ACG-1 tank in the right scale. And I can understand why nobody is in any rush to produce one. I mean, there were only about eight of them made in time for World War II, so I can't imagine they're that popular, or they're that much of a requested item. So yeah, it does make business sense that the companies would just keep churning out endless German, American, Russian, British. I have found another company that produces this Belgian armoured car, actually, but I'm holding out for the moment because I've heard that there could be some Belgian vehicles in the pipeline from Warlord. And if possible, I'd prefer to get them from there, so they all match nicely in the range. That's another one that I'd like to get, because it's a recce vehicle, which is very, very tasty in this game. So if you're thinking of playing one of the lesser nations, then don't be put off by the lack of diversity in their model range, because you can improvise, as I've shown you. And if you're really, really keen on super historical accuracy, then you can always replace the crew of the weapons with actual Belgian models if that's something that really bothers you. And the Bolt Action Facebook group is very, very helpful as well. So if you're thinking about starting up an army like this, and you want some ideas for models you can use, just post on there. I'm sure there'll be plenty of history nuts who'll be able to tell you the exact weapon that was used, and which other army used it, and has an available model. 
And if anyone wants to ask me for any advice, then just feel free to leave a comment or drop me a private message and I'll get back to you. So there you go. I hope some more of you out there are going to start carrying the flag for some of the underappreciated nations of World War II, because it's an awful lot of fun. And the novelty factor of using that army in games makes it more fun for your opponent, I've found, because it's not something they see very often. So, thanks for watching, and ta-ta for now, ladies and gentlemen.